Hi everyone, I want to talk about some advanced methods related to decomposition. So you can skip this video because I'm not going to say anything that, that probably you're going to use in the future unless you work in the Bank of Spain or in the American Census. But I think it's interesting to see how people have tried to discuss improvements over the basic decomposition method. So one of these methods is called X11. And the problem with this method is that it only works for quarterly and monthly data. But the idea is the following. When we discuss basic decomposition, we have this problem that the, the, we were missing some of the parts in the series, the beginning or the end of the series. And the other problem was related to the, the fact that the seasonal part was too spiky. So because of the noise and because of just subtracting the trend and, and from the original data, sometimes we are overestimating the role of seasonality. So one improvement of X11 versus the basic decomposition is that it recovers the lost part of the, se of the series. So now we are going to have data in, in the ends of the series. The other part is that we are allowed for some smooth variability here. So instead of having the same height for all the peaks, so the same pattern repeated over and over again, we are allowing for some modulation of the pattern. And, and you're going to see some examples later. And the good thing is that it can handle trading day variation, holiday effects, and, and any other known predictors are like, I don't know, for instance, imagine that you have the state of alarm in your country, but that, that is going to affect the prediction of your curve. So you can include this sort of information into the series. So let me show you an example. So this is the classical decompose. I'm going to use multiplicative one. And if you use the seasonal library, you have this function CS that basically is, uh, is the same as decompose, but you're including this parameter, x11 equals quote quote, and you have the same decomposition. So a couple of things that that, that is striking there. So you can see that the trend is, is noisier now, so you have more intrinsic variability here than in this case. And this is because we are putting some information of the trend in, into the seasonal part. So here we have the, the same height and the same depth in, in, in the seasonal part. And now here we have some modulation. And this is interesting because if you take a look at the residuals, you can see that here are some bars that are clustered together. So you have two bars up, two bars down, two, bar, two bars up and down, and so on and so forth. So this is a signature that there is some seasonality, there is some correlation in the residuals that are not captured by this decomposition. Here you can see that this is pure random noise. So basically you have some spikes below and above, but you don't see this trend as in this case. So this is a clearly an improvement. So we have changed a little bit seasonality and also you can see that we have recovered this missing part. So we are not using a strictly a moving average, so we can recover that, that part of information. So take a look at the other correlation function and here you can see that there are some differences. The first one is that you still have some things out of the box, out of these blue lines. But the problem is that you have the same information here. So you have these spikes out of the blue lines. But the problem is that you have some seasonality here. So seasonality is almost removed there. So these spikes are periodic, but they are almost zero everywhere. And here you are still keeping all these seasonal patterns. Okay. The next method that I want to talk about was created by the Bank of Spain, actually. And, and it's called SEEDS which is an acronym of seasonal extraction in ARIMA time series. So this is a kind of, uh, it's, it's like cheating because it's used in ARIMA that is going to cover, we were going to cover in another video. ARIMA to, to extract the, this trend and the seasonal part and then it's just doing this decomposition. So let's again compare the multiplicative decomposed with the seeds and you can see now that again we have this mod modulation there. Now we have a smoother trend lines and this is better than before if you go back to X11 you can see that the price that we pay because of the inclusion of this modulation, the seasonality, was that we have a, a more noisier signal here than there. And in this case, we don't have that, so this is smoother. But the problem is that we have back this correlation. So you can see now that we have a kind of cluster predictions there. So we have, we have gained something in terms of the, of, of the trend, but we have lost something in, ter of, in terms of correlation. So again, let's take a look at the our autocorrelation function. Here is the original decomposed with multiplicative uh, decomposition. And here we see it, and you can see that besides this point, which is outside, so there is some long-term correlation. And actually the fact that this is 8 means that we have some sort of periodicity still in the series. We have almost removed all the seasonality in the series. So you can see that there is an improvement over X11. Last one, if you remember the LOS, it was a method in which we can have a non-parametric smoothing of the signal. So here we are using LOS to extract the trend and then play a little bit with seasonality. So the, the good thing with LOS is that it, it can handle any type of data, not just quarterly or monthly data as in X11 and seeds. So this is an improvement. 
The other thing is that we also allow seasonal component to, to change over time. So we have still have this modulation. And the last thing is that because we are using LOES, if you go back to the videos about LOES, you can control smoothness. So you can have different weights in, in the weight in which you average at the point. So you can control how this smoothness is entering into the train and that is going to affect the seasonal part. And the good thing is that LOES is non-parametric, so we can handle pretty nicely outliers, something that the other methods can do very, very well. There is a small caveat there, because, because you can control smoothness, and that is good in principle, there is sometimes too much freedom in order to tune the model. So it performs worse than Arima-like methods, and, and sometimes you have to use cross-validation in order to have the best choice, and this is not simple to use. So let me show you an example. I'm going to use the basic uh, STL, using per, uh, uh, telling that the information is periodic, and I'm going to use different uh, smoothing windows, in this case, 31 days and 101 days, okay? So this is used for, for trend destruction. And this is the basic one. Um, I think that, that the default parameter is 10. So if you have 10, you have this is, uh, kind of noisy trend, but the, the, the reminder is pretty nicely, so probably there are no correlations there. If you go too far and you want to have a very smooth function, and this is why, why LOES is so popular, because you can have this smooth trend, then you're putting a lot of information into the residuals. And you can see that this is inadmissible, but, but this is the price you have to pay for this trend. Tuning a little bit the parameters, you can have the best of both worlds. So you can still have a smooth trend, and you can still have these feelings that the residuals are not very correlated. Of course, you have some correlations here and there, probably, but this is better than the other two choices. But as I was saying, there is too much freedom in the parameters, and sometimes this is not easy to tune. I'm going to devote a full video to show you how to do these things in R, but you can have a summary here of the basic decompose in additive and multiplicative form. Also, the library seasonal that is going to allow us to do the seeds and, and X11. And also seasonal view, which is a nice function that allows you to, to, to perform this sort of feeds interactively. So this is really nice. In any of these methods, if you want to strike each of the parts, after you have computed this decomposition or this seasonal decomposition, you can use these functions in order to strike the, the components. Or you can create a new time series in which you're, you're plotting just the seasonally adjust time series of the model. So I'm, I'm going to show you this in another video.